I'm currently finishing up my translation program. I'm doing translation from French into English, and I'm also completing the TESOL program. I was born and grew up here in Canada. I don't have a very interesting story for that. <laughs> Hello everybody, uh, my name is uh, Samuel, or call me uh, Yin Chen in, in my official documents. Um, I'm doing currently during the TESOL program, and my background is I'm, I'm from Hong Kong, and uh, I've been wanting to do some uh, sort of teaching program, a practicum. So this is a really, really, really great opportunity for me to do, and yeah. My name is David Jin. I'm studying the TESOL certificate program in York University. I, I want to get the TESOL certificate so I can teach English uh, back in China. Um, I'm planning to do some PhD program in computer science. So it's uh, very good to have a TESOL certificate on hand so I can get some part-time job. So I've always had teaching as part of my, one of my goals in the future, but I've never had the opportunity to do it. But Saskia's program has offered me a very, very good opportunity to get experience, get plenty of uh, work done uh, to achieve what I can. I feel like because I'm coming straight out of school trying to enter the teaching field, I'm going to be one of the very, um, one of the youngest teachers and I'm a little bit intimidated by the fact I feel like a child in comparison to all of the ESL teachers I've seen and all of my, uh, even in comparison to some of my peers. So I'm hoping that by the end of the TESOL program, I'll feel um, completely prepared and ready to enter the field as a full-fledged professional. She gave me a lot of advice. I had the fortunate uh, opportunity to do both um, online and in person. Um, both classes offer different functionalities in terms of ESL teaching. I have learned a lot about link programs in particular and how they are so much more than just English teaching and ESL learning. Education goes so much further than just English learning. It has to do with life skills, adjusting to a new country, adjusting to a completely new culture and environment that's probably very intimidating for them. So I learned a lot about link programs especially. Uh, the difference between uh, textbook and uh, reality, it's uh, quite shocking. I figured I should, uh, you know, uh, based on the textbook, the theory I learned in the uh, TESOL certificate program, but uh, the reality told me that uh, I should only refer to the, what's the textbook, what I learned. My mentor teacher is amazing. She is so warm and caring, and she just feels like an aunt figure or like a mother figure rather than um, a just a teacher. She is very amazing at creating an extremely warm and comfortable environment for everyone so that everyone feels comfortable to try and express themselves the best way that they can. She did a wonderful job, uh, introduced me to the teaching process and to, to her students. She kind of helped me to relax uh, in the classroom. She showed me how to uh, organize the classroom to go through the teaching process step by step. I've learned stuff as such as timing, how to transition from activity to activity, how to lay out lesson plan, all sorts of things. Um, it's a combination and it's um, a wonderful experience and it's very uh, sophisticated, if I can say. And they were in the yearly bridge program, so they didn't uh, go through the IELTS test. Um, I went to, through the very stressful um, test taking, but uh, the yearly bridge program is a kind of a lifesaver for most of the students in the classroom, so I guess uh, um, it's a, it's a wonderful program for, for them. I wish I was in that program. Some of them, we could say, oh, um, I just want you to get, to get through, want to get by the exam. Everybody has a different objective. 
But for the ones who really want to engage in the classes, they want to assimilate into Canada. And our courses, um, our program, ESL programs, DLL program, is that's the aim. You want the students to be involved in Canada. And those classes are the Im great immersion to do it. Every one of them is so different. Some of them are extremely shy. Other ones love to make jokes and are kind of like the class clown. Other ones are um, very reserved and others are so talkative and outgoing. There's so much diversity in their personalities, even within just a group of only 14 students. So I feel like that's the thing that stood out to me the most is how much diversity there is, even within a class of people who are supposedly coming from the same background. I would probably tell myself to not be so nervous about it. I was really nervous about the whole observation, going into the field, actually interacting with other ESL teachers, but especially when my mentor teacher is so warm and caring, she really helped me feel relaxed. So I would probably first say, don't be so nervous. And I don't want to say don't take it so seriously, but don't take it so seriously. Um, I was uh, uh, an very unconfident to be an English teacher be honest, um, placement showed me that uh, uh, my English proficiency was not a, a, de a decisive factor. I realized uh, I could be a, a good teacher. Everybody's very, very, very um, uh, scared of um, what's going to come. It's a practicum. You have to be placed into a real life scenario. What I can tell myself is that don't panic. Enjoy the experience. It's calm, learn, and um, listen to what the, um, the, your um, teacher, mentor teacher, tells you. If the teacher himself is good, then you should learn from her. Learn from him or her. And I chose the, uh, this, this program um, not be an English teacher, but to uh, improve my English proficiency, to be honest. I figured, why didn't I go to the place where uh, English teacher was produced? It turned out to be a great uh, choice. Um, I think um, Cantonese uh, uh, speaking uh, ability, it, it really helps in certain situations. Um, if, for example, if I'm in a, in a classroom of like, Cantonese speakers, but Imagine you could be going to be placed in a, uh, a immigrant classroom with so much background. Um, so I don't think you should just take it for granted. Say, oh, this background would going to help me. It won't. It it, it could help in circum certain circumstance, but you have got to realize there's way more options out there in the field. When it comes to those things that seem a little bit more menial, like all the administrative things, like the background checks and the certificates and extra things that you need to fill out online, I would also say to not um, procrastinate on those because those will catch up to you <laughs> and they seem like such small things to do, but you should try and get them done as soon as you can so that they don't become an issue later down the road.